Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about pollutants. We're going to have a look at five different pollutants, how they're formed and the impact that they can have on the environment. So whenever we burn hydrocarbons, um, such as fuels, um, we produce pollutants. The first example we're going to look at is carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide, chemical formula is CO2, dioxide meaning two oxygens. So how is it formed? Basically, it's formed through the complete combustion of a hydrocarbon. This just means when there's a plentiful supply of oxygen. Now, the impact that carbon dioxide has is as follows. Because carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, it absorbs infrared radiation. And this causes an increase in temperature. So this causes a phenomenon referred to as global warming, which I'm sure you've heard of. Due to the fact that this infrared radiation is absorbed by carbon dioxide, it causes an increase in global temperature. Now, the negative side of that is it basically is leading to the ice caps melting. Now, if the ice caps melt, not only is it bad for the animals that live in those particular regions, such as polar bears, but it's a problem globally because it causes rising sea levels across the world, which basically can cause flooding. So it causes those sea levels to rise across the globe. The next pollutant we need to know about is carbon monoxide. Now the formula for that one is just CO. So monoxide meaning one oxygen. Now how this is formed is instead of complete combustion of a hydrocarbon, it's from incomplete combustion. There's actually a separate video about the differences between these two types of combustion. Now, carbon monoxide is a particularly nasty substance. It's a toxic, odorless, colourless gas, which means you can't smell it, and you can't see it, making it extremely dangerous. Now, it's extremely, extremely toxic because what it does is it stops red blood cells in your body from carrying oxygen. And that causes you to suffocate. So if it hit, here's a red blood cell, Normally, it would carry O2 around the body to every cell. What carbon monoxide does is it binds to the red blood cell and it stops the oxygen from binding to the red blood cell. So that's why it's so, so dangerous. If you have, a large, if you have enough uh, of a high dose of this, it will kill you. Next up, we have soot. You might also hear this being called particulates of carbon or particles of carbon. Essentially, it's just carbon atoms. Um, again, this is formed from incomplete combustion of a hydrocarbon when there's an insufficient supply of oxygen. Now, basically, soot is that kind of um, nasty black stuff that you get when, uh, when, something's, when something burns. Uh, when you burn a hydrocarbon. So it's that horrible black dust. Now, what it can do is it can make buildings dirty. If you've ever seen loads of buildings that are right next to a really, really busy road in a big city, they're often quite blackened. And that's from all of the soot due to the incomplete combustion and all of the carbon coming from the car's exhausts. It basically reduces air quality and it can also cause respiratory problems. So those are problems with your respiratory system. So if I just draw a little diagram of the lungs right here, then hopefully that should be a nice demonstration of another problem caused by soot. Okay, now moving on, the next um, pollutant that we need to know about is sulfur dioxide. So this is SO2. Now what sulfur dioxide is, is formed from is actually within fuels, there are these things called sulfur impurities. 
So within fuels, there's little bits of sulfur that we don't really need to be there. They just are within the fuel. So what happens is when we burn those, those um, hydrocarbons that contain sulfur impurities, we're making sulfur dioxide. Now what that sulfur dioxide then does is it mixes with the water vapor in, in clouds to produce dilute sulfuric acid. And that acid can then fall down from the skies. So the big impact is this phenomenon called acid rain. So it's literally dilute sulfuric acid raining down from the clouds. Now the big problem is that it can cause are, um, first of all, it can kill trees. So the trees obviously are outside, they're exposed to lots of this dilute sulfuric acid so it can kill trees. Also, um, if it goes into lakes, it can basically acidify the lakes so it can also kill um, and kill wildlife. Particularly, let's say, fish that are in the lakes. So it can kill lots of those uh, fish that are within lakes. It can also damage statues. So if there's statues, particularly made of things like limestone, the acid can react with the limestone and cause corrosion and damage those things like statues and other buildings, in fact. So the final pollutant we need to look at are ones called oxides of nitrogen. Now, the formula for this one looks a bit weird because we've just put NOx. That's because this could be um, this could be a number one oxygen, two oxygens, or three oxygens. It just depends on what we formed. But all of these different oxides of nitrogen all have a particular impact. So how are these formed? So basically, whenever we have combustion occurring, for example, in an engine of a car, we have really high temperatures. And when we have really high temperatures, we can have nitrogen and oxygen, just which already exist in the air, reacting together. So it's due to the high temperatures within the combustion engine, for example, that nitrogen and oxygen from the air react together to make these oxides of nitrogen. So the bigger prob big problem associated with uh, oxides of nitrogen is photochemical smog. Photochemical smog. So you might have seen this before in certain cities. It's a type of air pollution. It looks a bit like fog, but it's produced from the um, from oxides of nitrogen. And the problem you can get with this is breathing difficulties. It can also affect visibility within cities. So those are the five pollutants we need to know about. That's the formation, how they're formed, and this is the impact they have on the environment. Thank you.